everyone. Uh, welcome to the 17th uh, Arcos Community Call. Today we're going to talk about connectivity, fairness, and machine actionable DMPs. So earlier this month, we kicked off the OS Trails uh, project. And Nelly will be mentioning a bit about the Argos uh, contribution about that and a little bit more about our project. So without further delay, Eli, the floor is yours. Thank you, Athena. Thank you so much. Uh, nice to see everyone. Well, see, I see your names. <laughs> I don't see you currently. Uh, Yes, uh, so the scope of today's meeting is to actually inform about this uh, this new project, as we have uh, already mentioned in the past that uh, this was going to launch. So, uh, Opener uh, is coordinating a new project about um, FAIR, um, DMPs, and scientific knowledge graphs. And we thought that it would be good to share uh, things with you because uh, this is going to be actually the basis of our work also in the coming three years. Um, and it would be good to, to share it with you. Okay, let me see. So we prepared the presentation for uh, like an introductory presentation for the project. Let me share my screen so that I start presentation. Okay. Good. You're able to see, right? Oh, what do you see? We see the present because I have I have two. Uh, okay. You should be able to find it in the display settings, Ellie. Or if I disconnect one of the screens. No, it won't work. <laughs> let me see, let me do it again. Maybe in display settings, there's a mirror uh, screen or something similar. So we see now? exactly what you have. Yes, great. Now it's perfect. Better. Good, thank you. Right, so please feel free to, you know, uh, jump in. Uh, this is a presentation, but this is the community call, so it's more informal. Um, let's to uh, start discussions uh, on any points uh, that uh, I will be uh, touching in the presentation. And again, Open Science Trails is a new project. It's a Horizon Europe project started uh, 1st of February, had the kickoff uh, on the 5th and 6th of uh, February in Athens, uh, hosted by uh, the coordinator, by Opener. And the project aims to deliver some, uh, takes a commons approach, let's say, and aims to deliver the tools, the methods, the guidance, the training to um, implement plant track assess um, uh, pathways uh, in the context of the European Open Science Cloud. So we are going to work on the interoperability to uh, be able to exchange this information across the different stages of research uh, and see how uh, we interconnect the existing infrastructure in order to do that. Oops. Well, our ambition is exactly this, to create the integrated research flows uh, that uh, capture not only publications, but also data, software, and other activities, actors, uh, and uh, research uh, products. Uh, across these stages of planning, uh, research, tracking it, and assessing it. And how we're going to do that is through collaboration. Of course, we bring a, a wide um, range of uh, research institutions and research infrastructure in order to you know, have a better representation of everyone's needs uh, in, the, in these three pillars of our work, the plan, track, and assess. And we bring also the services and the uh, infrastructure to uh, enhance, uh, improve it, let's say enhance it and connect it. Uh, so test what we're doing in real life uh, scenarios. These, uh, these are the partners. Uh, so you see that we're working these pathways together. Uh, these are not all actually, we have two more that are joining uh, the consortium. The two more are CW2S uh, from Leiden um, and CNRS from France. 
So as you can see, we have uh, different people and different infrastructures involved, sharing their knowledge and expertise and infrastructure. But while we're doing this, uh, what is, uh, how does the landscape look like today? Uh, today, we see that the landscape is a bit scarce. Uh, we It's siloed. Uh, although there are many uh, good, let's say, uh, attempts uh, also through EOSC to, to minimize this. We see that someone publishes, like a researcher publishes their um, product, usually a publication, maybe the data, maybe even the DMPs, uh, but this is not a, something that uh, is a usual practice, maybe the software. Uh, these are all may or not be linked uh, together. Uh, but in order to do those links, they are supported uh, by scientific knowledge graphs. So graphs, so, so infrastructures, uh, like the open air graph, for example, or domain specific ones um, that harvest these uh, sources, harvest these outputs and create the links between them. And then they, at some point, they all um, uh, support the research uh, reports, the research assessment reports, sorry. Um, but again, as I mentioned, we don't know what happens with the DMP uh, software outputs, if they're published or not, uh, where do they reside and stored and preserved. And the same with the fair assessment software that is used. We, there are different tools that we use. Where do the results uh, lie at the end? Uh, uh, because they also facilitate part of the research assessment, right? The fair aspects of the research assessment. So more into the limitations of these three pillars. Uh, so for uh, tracking, we have the scientific knowledge graphs and we see that they are becoming like the talk of the town, but they mostly refer to um, bibliometrics. So the descriptive metadata that they uh, get from um, the publications, I mean, the the scientific papers and uh, the venues where these uh, papers and preprints lie. Um, most of the scientific knowledge graphs are in their infancy. We see that there are quality issues related to the metadata. Some metadata might not be there, for example, uh, so they don't follow a standard metadata schema. For example, they're not compliant with uh, open air. Uh, this is an example. And they're missing relationships um, with other outputs. There's also, of course, the limited coverage uh, for uh, data, software, and other outputs. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we are very good in the um, publications um, side of things, but we're missing uh, most of what the the, the details that, that that lie on the data and the software uh, workflows and so on. And they uh, happen in isolation, so they are realized uh, in, in isolation. And they don't communicate with each other. Um, they're missing, of course, the knowledge that is carried by research communities. So research communities go beyond descriptive metadata. They also offer technical uh, metadata, for example, and uh, they go into the intricacies of the domain. And currently, we don't have uh, a graph that has this information. And um, there are also uh, interoperability at the moment and technologies uh, even to support them uh, is at the level of the catalog uh, and not um, on um, graphs. The limitations in terms of DMPs uh, are that we don't know if I mean, we create them, but we don't know if at the end uh, that we become better uh, in practicing research data management, the best practices uh, that we apply, or if our results are more fair when we, um, because we uh, organize uh, our practices through the DMP, so we don't know if at the end um, they're good or not. Uh, DMPs are shared. Uh, 
across communities. They might be shared uh, via, you know, through a repository like Zenodo, but they're not shared as fair outputs. So some of them uh, do not uh, fulfill, let's say, the all the principles from the from fair. Researchers still feel that uh, DMPs uh, are an extra burden and they are unsure about where to start and how to organize themselves when it comes to writing a DMP. Uh, we see that the domain data protocols that was um, suggested by Science Europe a few years ago, 2017 or 18, maybe even before, is still pending adoption. Um, and this could help because the main data protocols offer, uh, it's, it's like a tailored DMP for the discipline, for, for the specific domain. So this will help to uh, recognize and provide guidance to the specific uh, issues uh, addressed by its discipline, by its domain, uh, instead of having a generic DMP. I mean. And then uh, qualified references. Uh, are the references, uh, are, the, are the links between different, let's say, outputs uh, that have a specific relationship. So not just pointing from one thing to the other, but also um, specifying what this is about. If, for example, this data uh, is part of the DMP uh, or if uh, a publication supports or if the data supports the publication and so on. So we have all these relationships and we see that DMPs can help with those relationships, with those qualified references, but this is not a practice uh, that is adopted yet. In terms of fair assessments, uh, and this came actually from the report uh, of the ESC Association for Metrics and Data Quality Task Force. We had a survey last year, and I I include here some of the points uh, from the report that is going to be published uh, later in March, um, where we see that funders, institutions, and infrastructures provide limited funding, support, and guidance. Although they add, like they they include for fair assessment. Uh, and fair compliance, at least of the data, in their policies, in their research data management policies. The results uh, are inconsistent between tools that exist uh, to support fair assessments. For example, if we take the, the same um, data set and assess, assess it against the fairness in one tool and the other, you get different results. Uh, and that's because there are differences in how the different providers interpret the fair metrics. Uh, there is a lack of a commonly agreed minimum set of guidance and direction to assisting researchers. So we don't, we, currently we support researchers, but we don't know what's the minimum thing uh, that, uh, at least we don't have an agreement uh, between us of what's the minimum set of things that they could do in order to uh, satisfy the requirement by the funder or their institution. Uh, the results are not shared. The fair assessment results, those that we get when we use a tool are not shared. So uh, they remain somewhere, uh, maybe in the tool or they disappear. There's also a misconception, a misconception between fair and data quality. Some uh, respondents from this survey, as I mentioned, that it was a survey. Um, some use that interchangeably, fair and data quality, which of course there are dependencies, but uh, we shouldn't um, use them as synonyms. And there is miscommunication in, in, the, in, in what the tools support. We know, for example, that tools support fair assessments at the level of the metadata and not at the level of the data. So currently we are very much sure of assessing the, meta, the descriptive metadata um, that repositories have. So in a sense, it's like we are assessing the, the repository against the fair principles, so how fair enabling it is, and not that much uh, on the data aspects. 
uh, how we're going to tackle all this uh, through open science stress, through a stress is this. <laughs> uh, we have three pillars uh, that we are going to work on, plan, track, and assess. And in each one, we are going to uh, support interoperability. Uh, and for DMPs, for example, in the planning phase, we want to move away from having PDFs to having an ex to having an, an, a, um, a DMP export uh, and all the information that we need in this export that can be used to act on behalf of different uh, services and activities that we have to do throughout the research data lifecycle. In the tracking phase, we have um, we need to um, make sure that we include more outputs rather than uh, only publications. With this, we have already um, and make the relationships between them. And in the assessment uh, phase, uh, we have the third tests uh, that describe uh, the community rules for. Um, for each element uh, of the uh, digital, for, for each output. So we need to, ben we, we want to benchmark the fair tests. Fair tests are the piece of software code that implements a fair metric. So we need to, uh, so we want to benchmark these so that they're used uh, consistently by uh, all the uh, providers, all the fair assessment tool providers uh, and get the same results. Uh, that's what will help us accomplish this and also implement uh, move from assessment to assistance. So give also guidance on how to uh, better the practice to be more fair. Oops. Well, an overview of the project, uh, we have different phases that we're going to implement it. First phase is um, the design, we are going to co-design the interoperability reference with the services that are on board, and I will talk about them in a minute, um, for the scientific knowledge graphs and fair assessments. Uh, and we're going to co-design them also from input taken from pilots. We have 24 pilots in the project that are, are going to give input and feedback to uh, uh, to adopting our results in national settings uh, in 15 countries and in domain specific settings so in brought by uh, partners that are uh, that are having uh, research infrastructure that represent research infrastructures uh, then we are going to having had the interoperability reference uh, we are going to um, implement and federate through the DMPs uh, scientific knowledge discussion for assessments to um, um, work on the automations, the capabilities for automations for these people to automate and exchange uh, information between them. And we are going then to empower fairness, but not only fairness, but assessment in general. So we are going to um, develop the tools and methods needed to um, perform for assessments in different um, uh, outputs. And also we are going to have to assess the, the, the DMP, not against fair metrics, but against the DMP evaluation criteria like the Science Europe one. And we're going also to um, have uh, you know provide more accuracy and coverage uh, in the information that is harvested by the scientific knowledge graphs, and of course we are we want to have the f to embed the fair metrics uh, inside DMPs so that when you create the DMP you also assess the fairness of uh, your work, and same for scientific knowledge graphs we want this fair metrics to be uh, an entity in, in there. And we're going to implement them, implement all these results um, by um, the 24 pilots that we have uh, who will adopt those results uh, and um, 
yeah, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but we have 24 uh, real use cases uh, that are going to um, play that place in the election this because they, you know, um, they, they will they will give us uh, the requirements that they have based on the different infrastructure that they have and the different maybe open science maturity even and uh, different needs and that they also have. Uh, this is the overview of the project, another, let's say, view uh, of what I just explained. You can see the different uh, here, maybe, you can see the three pillars, planning, tracking, assessing, working on interoperability on each pillar and across uh, through also uh, the uh, services. You can see some of those services here that are onboarded working on DMP evaluation and on the quality of the scientific knowledge graphs metadata. You can also see here some of the services. Testing them uh, on thematic and, and national settings. And all that are happening in alignment with uh, core, let's say, uh, projects that are running uh, that have similar interests and scope, let's say, or they, they also uh, work on some of those uh, planning, tracking, or assessing areas, but they tackle it from different angles. So we're going to align with them and complement each other uh, on what we do, for example, with GRASPO, SILE, COARA, Perkoforios, and also RDA, of course, there is a data alliance. Key results, uh, more the high level, no, no, this is not an exhaustive list, um, are the commons. So we're going to have common methods, tools, services, guidance, and training um, across these pillars. For example, a commons might be uh, a machine actionable template for the DMPs, since we are uh, focusing on the DMPs today, uh, that is shared across you know, providers. Then we're going to have a DMP evaluation rubric. We're going to work with funders. We, we will get their input uh, to extend the Science Europe rubric and um, see how we can, what are the criteria that we need to take into consideration to create a DMP evaluation service. Uh, then we are going to have a, a research product quality toolbox for scientific knowledge graphs, which will offer a set of annotations uh, to improve the quality of metadata in scientific knowledge graphs. Case studies and proof of concept instances through the pilots, of course, to test, uh, to, to define, uh, you know, fit for purpose pathways across um, uh, the three pillars of our work. And training library and integrated competence center uh, with uh, learning resource, open learning resource, of course, um, and uh, uh, targeting not only, uh, targeting both the usage of these services and these results, but also uh, following a train the trainer approach uh, on the different uh, things. Uh, I mean, on the on the three uh, areas of our work. Uh, the adoption is going to um, happen through the pilots. You, you see, we have twenty four, as I mentioned, representing seventeen countries and five clusters. Uh, the SSH, and, I mean, social science and humanities, environment, life sciences, physics, astrophysics, uh, and a majority of countries, as you see here. And we recognize that no one size fits all, but every uh, country, for example, and domain have their own um, specific needs um, and uh, have, are, are, you know, are organized differently and bring different technologies even and services um, in the in the in the work so we're going to work uh, to provide solutions that fit um, all of them um, in terms of the yeah we have two main let's say um, pilots national uh, two categories of pilots national and thematics we 
split them uh, like that uh, based on the coverage. And um, these are, you can see here, some of the activities that the pilots, the national pilots will, um, will perform. Some will develop uh, all of them. Some will develop a collection of them. Uh, they're not all the same because they bring different, again, needs and services and, um, into the table. But mostly uh, they will develop machine actionable templates. They will extend the repositories to archive machine actionable DMPs and create relationships with publications between publications data and DMPs. They will interoperate with a graph, the open air graph or other scientific knowledge graphs, um, and include, again, qualified references with uh, other uh, instruments uh, and activities, research activities. Uh, they will codify the fair metrics for funders. Uh, so they will work with the funders to get the input and in order to assess at the end the fairness of the deposited outputs of the repositories, maybe the national data services, national repositories that they bring, codifying DMP evaluation criteria and assess DMP's quality, and extend the national monitoring systems uh, with machine action with DMPs. Uh, the thematic pilots are uh, nine in total. Uh, the, we have some domain specific and some cross domain, two actually cross domain. And the activities to choose from are uh, again developing the machine actionable DMP template for the specific community, embedding also fairness, uh, so fair metrics uh, into these templates. Uh, however, they will be expressed uh, from the work that will from the work that will be performed uh, in the uh, architecture. Um, Oops, sorry. Part of OS trails. Um, they will enhance the catalogs uh, and the scientific knowledge graphs with different entities, PIDs and relationships from instruments, experiments, facilities that they have. Create also links with publications and data and DMPs. And co-define domain specific fair metrics and assess the fairness of these uh, published outputs. The services that are brought by the partners uh, to help achieve all of that are, um, in terms of SKGs, are the Open Air Graph, Software Heritage for Software um, Information, and the S3, the Research Infrastructures Catalogs Repositories, and also National Pre Systems and Catalogs. And the idea is so, as you can see, we, we, we have like uh, some disentanglement disentanglement to do here um, and define uh, what uh, how we how we view a scientific knowledge graph um, to be a versus a repository for example and what the relationship is and we're going to enhance the scientific knowledge graph uh, through um, a common model through apis that are going to support the uh, exchange of information, flows uh, to integrate information to indicators, so the metrics for FAIR and for DMPs, um, harvest actionable DMPs so they so they can harvest actually and they can have this information for DMPs uh, there and uh, accept notifications when something changes because um, we're going to exchange information but we need to also make sure that we notify each other about the different changes. Um, for the DMP platforms, you see here the DMP platforms that are onboarded uh, and uh, either directly brought, like Argus DSW, the map, which is the Austrian uh, solution, SICT, which is the uh, Swedish uh, solution, DMP Tuli, which is the Finnish one, and RDMO, which is the German solution for DMPs and is brought indirectly through uh, our partner who is going to. Who, who, who uses, like they use this tool to create their templates. And you can see that they are European wide or national. Some are offered uh, as a service, some on premises, 
there are different levels of uh, readiness and the compliance with the machine uh, actionable, the DMB common standard uh, um, produced by RDA. And we're going to enhance uh, this model, the RDA model, to support, um, support the different actions that uh, we need them to do. Um, we have we will going to have common APIs so that they exchange information, integrate depositing functions so that they can share uh, their outputs, enhance um, more of the existing APIs that they have, not the commons that they that they will be used to exchange information with each other, but the uh, APIs that they have to exchange information with other services. Connect to external DMP evaluation services so that you can evaluate the DMP output that you, when you when you write the DMP uh, in the service and then send notifications also. This is across all, all um, services. For fair assessment, you see also here the different services that are brought. And there are different, uh, there are differences of how they perform the assessment. Is it self-assessment? Is it more automated, um, I mean, manual or automated, uh, used in different contexts with different protocols? And we're going to enhance the, no, that's a wrong, that's a wrong slide here because this is a wrong list. But for fair assessment, we're going to, of course, work on um, uh, the fair tests, uh, the piece of software that is going to be uh, common uh, across all. And uh, we're going to work on the APIs so that they can share these fair tests um, across services. And we're going to work to embed these fair tests inside different tools like DMP tools. Here is a glossary uh, in case this is uh, useful. Uh, I already explained, uh, and this is uh, thanks to Mark Wilkinson, who is a partner uh, leading actually, uh, a work package about fair assessment in this project. And I already said, explained what fair test is, but I didn't uh, go through uh, the explanations of fair metric and fair assessment. You can see them uh, here and you can also find them uh, online when we'll post this presentation under the Argos community call uh, page. And thank you. And I see we have, I think some Something on the chat. Let me stop sharing my screen. And let me see. I think it was just me, Ellie. I was asking for the reference for the domain data protocols, but it looks like we've put our heads. You found it? Uh, I, I, it I, I later heard you reference the Science Europe uh, guidance document from 2018. I assume that that's the one, right? Yes, that's the one. Correct, correct. Thanks. Hi, Andrew. And yeah, Andrew is one of the partners uh, representing CWTS and will be involved in the um, uh, pilot uh, for uh, the Dutch pilot in, in, for the Netherlands. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Yes. Okay, you found it. Oh, are there more questions? Please unmute. Okay. Wait for now. Yes, there are some questions from uh, uh, Jenny. I don't know if you want to speak, Jenny. Hi, I should start my camera. Yeah, I was wondering, um, does anyone have examples where research funders accept mesh and actionable DMPs at the moment? And you mentioned that there will this, be this one key result um, that you will adopt the fair evaluation rubric. Um, so when is this deliverable ex uh, expected? So, okay, from Argos, uh, we we work with funders. For example, we work with Cistera, which uh, is an, a European uh, consortium of national funders funding ICT projects. Uh, and they... Um, also uh, accept they they accept both because we 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 give both PDFs and uh, machine actionable uh, um, DMPs and we worked with them because their priority was also um, 
well, their, their concern was also to create a machine actionable template, not only just in DMT template. Um, and we actually are going to launch next month a new uh, a, a new version of, of their of their template, having both software plans and uh, you know combining both software plans and uh, data plans. Um, and Latvian Research Council, uh, the the Latvian uh, Research Council also, uh, we work with them, and they came to us because their priority is also to have. Um, uh, machine actual them. So we, yes, there are funders uh, that are, we are working um, and we know that they want this. And sorry, what was the other one? What was the other uh, part of your question? Uh, when the evaluation rubric uh, deliverable is expected in Ah, the it's Austria, due. It's okay. Let me, actually, let me uh, search it now. I don't remember it by heart. Um, Deliverables. Because as you said, there is many interests that in this feature. So it would be very interesting to know. Let me see. Month 28. Oh, so it's yeah, 28 is if now it's month one, then we have a, a long way ahead of us. So it's uh mid 2026. Yes. And then, are there more questions? Let me see. There is a one from Lisa. Yes, I had one more question. Um, mostly connected to the Argos tool, actually. Um, I was wondering, um, I don't know if you uh, sort of know the, the common standards um, proposed by the RDA um, from the top of your head, but it's just some fields, basically. Um, are they already implemented in Argos? Um, and it's probably more a uh, Argos specific question, probably less of a direct OS trails question, but it obviously kind of um, informs um, our tool of choice for a national pilot. That's where that question is kind of coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the, the short answer is yes, let me know. Perfect. <laughs> Elaborate. Uh, so, we are also members. Uh, well, co we are, we are co-chairing uh, the Active DMPs uh, group from RDA, so we collaborate with uh, the other uh, chairs, uh, and we currently at at the at the the current version that the DMP Commons Center has, we have implemented it and we support it. Um, but this is going to change. So as you saw in the Open Science Trails project, we are going to extend this standard and uh, we're going to work on, we're going to reevaluate what is already there and uh, see if we can uh, provide more information. Uh, yes, I think that's, that's the answer. Great, right, thank you. I mean, I can point you also to actually, you know what? I can point you also to some. Let me see. So the adoption story uh, that we had for our DA. And then this is it. Let me share this. Plus, um, the latest um, the latest paper that we have. Okay. And as you saw, actually, and thank you for um, for that, because as you saw, we have a new release which I didn't talk about because the um, I started with oysters. We have a new release out of, of Argos. And, and you see that what we're talking uh, that this, that the, the last quarter of last year, about the, having a blueprint which defines the structure and you can combine the templates uh, for different outputs and activities inside the, 
uh, this blueprint and connect pre-fill different sections with different sources and everything. So that's already uh, live. So you can test it. There's also a news item, a news piece that we created to support a better you know, understanding of this change. And we are working on creating some tutorials and new new material uh, that uh, that can also support uh, uh, communication and, and dissemination activities that we do. Um, any other question? I, I was trying to raise my hand, but I don't know if it was working. Just on YouTube. <laughs> Um, I have maybe two questions, and if either of them are out of scope for this call, we can talk about it separately. Um, so, as Ellie said, uh, I'm Andrew Hoffman. I, I work at Center for Science and Technology Studies at Latin University, and we're um, sort of co-running one of the national pilots on the project. We're curious about using Argos on our national pilot. Um, and I know that Argos generally has a default uh, feature that publishes DMPs to the Argos graph, or sorry, to the open open air graph when they're created in Argos. That that was what my understanding was, at least as of some time ago. Maybe that's changed. Um, so I guess the question is, has that changed? Um, will we? Is it possible to create templates and play around with them um, and even fill out DMPs without? sort of defaulting to publishing for now. Um, and I think beyond that, in the sort of medium to long term, are there, are, you know, is there any thinking on, on y'all's end about how to represent knowledge graph, uh, how to represent DMPs in the open air graph without necessarily exposing the full payload? And I, feel like I had a conversation with someone at the kickoff meeting about this. Maybe it was with you, maybe it was with someone else. Um, but for me, I think, you know, I, I'm a data steward. I work with researchers. I, I, I think that I'm going to be having a hard time finding folks who are ready to publish their DMPs in their entirety, you know, somewhere, anywhere, really, uh, at this point. Um, but I think that we can do interesting work in mm -hmm. about, you know, the metadata for these entities that again can be sort of the the existence of a, a DMP can be exposed and certain metadata can be exposed that may still be useful and relevant to folks who are reusing some of the you know that material. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. Thank you. Let's uh, start with the first. I tried to note them down so that I don't forget. Uh so the first one if uh, you can um let's say opt out from publishing the dmps uh, on the graph yes if you we only the graph only gets the open graph only gets what is published uh, on the node so if you click if you select to after finalizing your dmp to also deposit it then it uh, goes through to the node and then the node is uh, the opener service for um depositing so we immediately have that information. And we immediately have both the PDF and the machine action of the DMP, right? Um, so if you don't just do that, then that's fine. It's kept internally. It's not shared with the, with the graph. And the other one is about uh, sharing the whole uh, DMP, right? Um, publishing the whole DMP. And there are issues with that because there might be sections in the DMP that you don't want to share because they they, they detail sensitive data, you know, management. And currently, um, well, we had this we had this option that you could select which section, I mean, which data set. Sorry, not which section, which data set you could leave out from publication. From when when clicking uh, depositing, but now because we have this new feature, the blueprint feature, we are um, refactoring this mechanism to support 
the selection of specific sections. So if the section is about sensitive data, to just um, not include it, select not to include it uh, in the publication. Um, but there are two different things when sharing the DMPs. One, one is the metadata, the descriptive metadata uh, on you know the title, the, the, the usual, the title, the description of the DMP, the authors, etc. The other one is the attachment, which is the files, the uh, the exp the PDF and the JSON that are also uh, uploaded to the to the repository and become part of graphs. Um, and I think that for this for the latter, I already answered that we uh, are going to have this feature refactored uh, and the metadata, the descriptive metadata, we're going to work um, in the OS trails uh, through the DMP common standard. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? I think it's good if we can also um, involve uh, you all in the, because we're going to have some workshops, national uh, workshops. So if you represent one of the countries that you saw in the presentation, it's good if you could also participate. Um, I mean, if you want, we want to, to, to widen the, the representation of of universities and you know organizations, but for example, Yeni, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you would like to to participate in one of those events. Which which work package or uh, or is is this? Is this independent of OS trails, or this is part of OS trails? No, no, this is part of OS trails. No, no, this is part. Uh, work package five. <laughs> okay. But if there are no questions or um, for OSTS or for Argus, then we can wrap it up. Good. <laughs> then we'll see each other in a month from now. And wish you all a good rest of the day. Thanks Thank for you. joining, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.